Hello, everybody. How y'all doing? I put a lot of time out ahead of time. I'll let you know I'm here. I want to go ahead and announce a couple people. We won some big packages. Five houses each. Yeah. And we have more. Doing really good. What's it been? Hey, we're getting a few people. Nice to see y'all. One of my music videos it's called Wibbley and Wub. The Book of Wibbley and Wub by Brad Cattell. Is a uh, an interesting story for a lot of people. It's kind of like, what do you do when you're lost? And you want to give up? What do you do? Hey, Susie. Audrey. Don't wait till the show is over. Remember, you can be a part of this play. You're free. Do whatever you want. Sometimes you need a little help. That's what I'm trying to do. Provide some help out there in the world for these people that are doing something already. Good. For other people. Some of us have spent a lifetime gathering the knowledge. Oh, good. Lanky. I'm glad you're here. I liked your letter. I saw it. I read it. You're one of the people I'm talking about today. Yes. Trinity's looking over your letter. It covers all the things I'm looking for. What am I looking for, guys? What am I looking for? I'm looking for some clarification as to what you're doing, what you've been doing, what you spent your life doing. I'm not out to hear a bunch of sob stories with sad endings of people that have never done anything after the trauma, after the challenges, after the tragedies that have made them who they are. This is about how do you take all that garbage you started out of and turn it into wonderful positive things. The people that are coming to me are not people that had easy lives, all of them. They're not people that were gifted with rich families and schools. No. They're like me. They struggled. They worked. They took their hits. They got ripped off by other people because they were trying to be good over and over again. And they're still trying to be good because they're good people. This is about how do I help good people continue to help other good people. It's not like they're not going to make money. Absolutely the opposite of that. You have to make some sort of income to support your village. That's what this is about. That's why I'm making having an outpost part of it. A pure salvage outpost is nothing more than a place to work, to build, to create, to bring the elders to the kids and to put it together. This is a submission I have. One of them. In it, they go ahead and cover who it is, where it's at. What are they going to do? What's the location? How much acreage do they have? How much land do they have? Are they able to do this on that land? And so she covers that. It's not really so much an essay contest. It's an essay to describe what it is you have to offer. What it is you're going to put into the mix so we can create a network of people who care and, and actually do things for other people instead of just go burn down cities and trash buildings and put businesses out of business by destroying what little savings they have. I've watched 80-year-old men cry on the streets because their business. Black men burned by other people. They spent their lifetime working their way out of the ghetto and then everything they had was burned to the ground by angry people who did nothing, nothing positive for the world. This is about what can we do positive and the people that are doing something positive, 
I'm going to give them something to help them, to speed them up down that road. Since the government is speeding us up down the opposite road, I have a very difficult time believing this is really happening in Washington, D.C. I would prefer to think of it as a prison camp. We're putting all the bad people in it. They're coming up with these really bad ideas to go ahead and take away our right to raise our children the way we want and to not put parents in jail who don't want to have their children going through sex change programs prior to being 16 years old or something like that. There's a bunch of crazy stuff going on. The only way to stop it is to have villages and towns of sane people getting together to try to go ahead and help others out. It's not that I don't believe that people can have all sorts of choices and they can live any lifestyle they want. But that doesn't mean that you have the right to go and kill other people or shut them down or burn their businesses or do all those other terrible things because they have nothing to do with what you're griping about. They did nothing at all to bring slaves over or to kill Native Americans hundreds of years ago. I didn't do that. There's none of this white privilege. I was a poor white boy. I had to earn everything, even the money from my own clothes. By the time I was a teen, 12, 13, I started working at 13 years old. There's no white privilege. In fact, if you're white and poor, sometimes it don't work so good for you either. Good gracious. Police don't like me a whole lot. They don't like my attitude. You don't have to have color for that to happen. Now, I'm not saying, believe me, that there's not prejudice, because trust me, I know there is. I have stood in the middle. I have stood between the opposing forces. It's there from both sides. And Americans, my son probably died because he was an American in France. Probably at the hands of those that have been bombed out by our very own bombs from America and Libya and Egypt and Syria. They hate the Americans that killed their families with stray bombs and drones and very justifiable hate, unfortunately, that everybody has to get over. We can't keep hating each other and try to form a peaceful world. So these are little bastions, little villages, little places where people can go and find peace inside. One group's a veterans group. I'd love to see them get these to build houses. Will it happen? It's going to depend on them. And that's why I'm trying to pick people that are capable, that are able to go ahead and put their background down there. It says, you know, as a girl, I took shop class in the 1980s. Of course, these are things I want to know. That's good. Learning building construction skills by you know, your parent taught you, your dad was a carpenter. These are things I need to know in order to be saying, okay, I can send you stuff. Um, and it says in there, the, the people that are with her, you know, they've, they've done this. They know how to build things. They're already trying to do what I'm asking. And that's build out a salvage, save things. They're already doing it. And they need my help. And I've got that to offer, so I'm going to. Um, divorces, I mean, all over the place. You see divorces, it happens. You know, we start off thinking one way at 20 years old, and by 30 or 40, we think a different way, and we didn't always grow in the same direction. It happens, hopefully amicable, not like my last one. You shouldn't strip everything you've got out of the relationship when you leave and leave the other person with nothing, except the bills, the debt, the liabilities. The excuse that I raised your child doesn't work when actually it's also the child of the spouse. So when we get into these battles, all these battles that go on, in the end, the children a lot of times are paying. Some of these people I'm granting these gifts to are the children that paid. And some of them are the people that are trying to help the children that paid. Like the GIs. Guys that go in the military out of school, out of high school, out of their family home and go into the army for 20 years and they're fighting soldiers and they never actually understand really how it works out in the outside world. They've got a job. They fight for something and they're guaranteed they got a job Monday morning. Here, you could fight for something, give everything you got on Monday morning. Hey, we don't need you no more. Get the hell out of here. Uh, sorry, I, no sympathy. Just get out of my way. We don't need you anymore. That's the American employee market for a lot of people. It's, it's horrible. And I sympathize with those people. Part-timers, no security, no check when they leave, nothing like that. This is about how do we combat that. 
how do we take kids who are orphaned or who are in childcare, who are um, coming out of systems and they need a, an occupation? How do we teach them some carpentry? And who's willing to do that? I think there are people that are willing to do that. Elders that have the time to change their knowledge, their wisdom into function, into action with kids. And the joy you get out of seeing a kid build a, his first tiny house that he gets to live in instead of possibly go out there and live on the street. This is important. This is Connie I'm talking about here. And Connie, I-H-L-E, I-L, I'm going to go my pronunciation skill, and this one is going to be absolutely zappo. But they're out by Lake Quashita in uh, Arkansas. Beautiful country. And they've got acreage. It's a retreat property, and there are other people there to help. One's a 78-year-old artist. Mm, my heart. Really. It is the elders in their 70s and 80s and 90s that have the most to offer us. Please. As a child of 65, have these people as part of your community if you want to impress me. Shows you respect elders. Shows you respect wisdom. It shows you respect knowledge that comes with history and our past. Elderly neighbor. I want those elderly neighbors part of it. They're the, in the end, if you make a village and you have elderly neighbors around you, take care of them, you help them out and everything else, you know what? They just may leave you that land to grow the village into being better. These are the things we want to see happen because the examples that these people can do, maybe you will pay attention to. Maybe that will be what turns your head. Makes you say, you know, I could do something. I don't have to sit and watch TV instead and just go be a troll in other people's places and give them crap because they're trying to do something good. Yeah, people do. I still get them. You know why? Oh, you're a right winger because you want... No, I'm not a right winger. I'm a, a conservative, I guess, because I don't want to go out there and pierce my nose and, and do all the other things other people want to do. That they I, that doesn't make me a bad person. In the old days, I'd have been considered a yippie. That's after the hippies, the ones of us that had to work because we couldn't go off to concerts and just do drugs and have a good time. We had to work and do drugs and have a good time. So we could pay for our drugs without stealing. Okay, so assets. Very good. She goes through and tells me what are our assets they have in place. The large shop that's already in place. The, sh the tool shed that's lockable. So you keep those tools. Um, electric, water, sewer. They're on the property already. That's important. Why? You're probably going to need it. And if you don't have it, you're going to have to tell me how you're going to get it. Because I'm not going to send you a bunch of stuff so you can all go out there and shit in little piles on the ground. Excuse me. I'm not allowed to say that word. Sorry, Trinity. She's on the road. Okay. So she spells out her assets. Chicken houses, you know, chicken coops, greenhouses, and all that stuff. Now, on top of that, and this is very important. I'm not going out there trying to go ahead and create poverty. I'm trying to stop poverty in his tracks by empowering people to do something about it like she is doing so adding the addition of tiny houses to the forest farm retreat yes that's the name of the group that's going to get loads and loads of stuff if they not figure out the logistics how do they drive out here how do they plan on having a few people spend a day or two out here to learn um, the techniques you might use to build or the style. It's called space magic. So we make sure you send it back by designing the house before you leave. Enough windows, enough doors, enough material to be able to build it when you get back there as much as possible. You're going to have to get some 2x4s. You're going to have to get some 2 by 6s But I'll probably provide nearly everything else. Hinges, hardware, doors, windows. You have to get insulation. You need to get screws. You need to get nails. I've said all this before. It's on the other videos. People go, oh, well, I don't want to have to watch all those videos. Well, guess what? I don't want to give you any stuff if you don't. Is that childish enough? Yes, there's a responsibility to take this on. you got to have some responsibility. And yeah, you don't want to watch all my videos. I'm okay with that. Don't watch them all. But then if you go ahead and submit a paper that doesn't have some of this stuff on it that the people who watched it paid attention to, well, then you're just going to miss out. 
provide materials so we can build floating tiny houses on Lake Kashita to be sold and financially benefit both parties. So this sends money back here and we can then use that money to train more people and send them out. Because guess what? It takes time. It takes money. You know, I spent all my money. All I got is stuff to give away. Nobody's ever contributed, by the way, a single dollar toward any of the stuff you've ever watched on Tiny Texas Houses, Salvage Texas, Pure Salvage Living, or anything else. Brad, in his great generosity for many years, paid for it in Darby. Now I continue to spend his money to do the same thing for him, to give all this to you. With Trinity's help, and a few other people occasionally showing up so we can help, because you got to have people here to help take the parts and put them on the trailer. I'm not doing that for you. You have people here to learn or show me they know how to build. And if they know how to build, I'll just show them the technique, which I have a couple of techniques that allow you to take that house down the road at 70 miles an hour and it doesn't bend, it doesn't break. And when you get there, you can hit the brake and load it off and drop houses in other places so you can sell them, like she says. Boat houses. Also, provide materials so we can build outhouses, composting toilets, and all those kind of things for people that have cabins that are going to need those because they will. And also, we're going to come up with upbeat, for example, concepts to have things you're going to sell in the store. The outpost is also a store, so you can make an income to support your ideology, to support your village, to support the people that will need that. People need money. I'm not denying people money. In fact, I want these outposts to produce income. And she's very proper in pointing out that it also makes income for the home base, where all the materials are stored at, where you come back to every time. So if you sell a house and you make some profit on it, you want to bring some profit back here to help everybody else continue to make profit. It's a network. It's a co-op where everybody gets to be their own independent bosses. And as long as you do great and wonderful work and don't rip people off, I will endorse you, send you business, keep giving you materials, and you keep paying me back after you build it, after you sell it. Some way down the line, it all will balance out. Nikki, you're one of the people I'm waiting to get some land. You're coming together. You're getting it. You know how hard it is. This is hard. It's not easy. But if you do the work, the reward will be there. For as long as I can hold out. And I'm not saying I can do this forever. I'm not saying I can afford to continue to pass out stuff. So once a, a, a week, every other week, We'll try to bring in a group of people to work together to load up every stuff and to pick it all out. I mean, it's not easy to load out my warehouses. My warehouses are, I mean, it's a nightmare. And I'm not doing it myself so I can put it on your trailer so you can go home. I got to have help. And if you can't help, get your stuff. How in the hell are you going to put it up? It's logistics. Challenges. Some people don't know what that means. And she says here, and this is very important, you know, whether it's hosting retreats for other people, becoming the examples, because every one of these people that goes out there and becomes the example, the forerunners, as she says, trailblazers in your area, getting people to wake up again and use all those materials instead of sending them off to China as salvage materials that they can then turn around and use. Because they don't have to produce them, they don't have to mine it, they don't have to do any of the stuff we did with all those places that we made so much pollution from making all that metal. Why would we sell it all for nothing? Why would we give away all these trees that we have already harvested, turned into houses? Why don't we just harvest them again and turn them back into houses again? We can harvest our own crop over and over again. We do not have to plant new trees to harvest the wood again. We do not have to fire up the furnaces to make glass when I have literally 10,000 square feet of antique glass in sashes ready to be used again without ever firing up a single furnace. Why would I want to have to make all those saws, create all the sawdust to cut up all the lumber? Why? The human energy, the labor of the 12 year olds that sharpened the blades that made all that lumber from 1830 to 1945 or 50 when they ran out of longleaf pine as a viable commercial product. Cut down 5,000 square miles of trees that were 130 feet tall and 15,000 square miles of loblolly, which is a species close to longleaf pine, but grows faster, doesn't have as big of cones, doesn't have as big of needles. They cut all it down too and abandoned the land. 
What you see now is second, third growth. And not near what the virgin forests were. They ran from Orange County, Texas, all the way to Atlanta, Georgia. A squirrel could get in a tree. And if he wanted to, never come down. That's how dense the forests were. I tell people all the time, we have the largest standing virgin forest in the world. Hidden in the United States. And they scoff. If you saw how much lumber comes out of an old barn, out of an old building, out of an old store, out of an old house, you wouldn't scoff. It takes a lot of trees cut down to make a house. Why would you throw it all away? Why would you cut it all up, cure it all, and throw it away when it's actually at its best state? It is like hard. It is like the sap is crystallized and I can't drive a nail in there by hand. It is so hard bugs won't eat it. Why would I throw that away? I'm going to go spend $2 for a two-foot-long two-by-four in the store that's grown in 12 to 15 years and it's basically all cellulose, bug candy, waiting for bugs to come and eat it unless you put pesticides on it. And I'm going to take that instead of taking an old board that's going to last and you can leave it out there in the sun, leave it out there in the rain, and the bugs won't touch it and it won't work. And it'll take decades to rot. Now, which do you prefer? Overpaying for an inferior product or paying a decent price for a good product? Or go out and get for human energy. Decent price for good product. And build yourself houses with human energy. Because if you teach everybody, they can build a tiny house easy. Build a 5,000 square foot house that you don't need full of shit rock and all sorts of other problems. No, you got to hire professionals to take your money and borrow for the rest of your life to be in debt. So you can have a product that will go bad in 15 years. Built in obsolescence. Your roof is bad in 15 years. Your air conditioning is 15 years. Your water heater won't make 15 years. Nothing in your house is made to last over 15 years. So if you build a house out of old lumber that's already lasted 100 years and it's going to last for another 150 years, you can hand that tiny house off to somebody else and they can move it down the road. Simple logic. You think everybody would like this idea, but for some reason, we've got everybody hooked on buying big shit rock houses. That means I say that word because it is 47% fly ash, which is a hazardous waste if exposed to public breathing it. But instead, we go ahead and mix it up with some gypsum in a liquid form and with black mold that won't kill off. It just dries out. And we put it in between paper and call it sheetrock because now we've diluted it with 53% gypsum to make it a non-hazardous waste only by dilution, not by content. And put black mold in there so if it gets wet, you will have black mold in your house because they can't kill that black mold. It's kind of like having the disease that kills 250,000 people a year in hospitals, which is different bacteria and things that they cannot kill with most average things. That's why people die in hospitals of those infections because they're so nasty. Same with black mold and shit, sheet rock. So stop using it. If you want to use magnesium oxide board, it's great. Works much better. It's, and it's actually cheap. Stops the radiation. Stops microwave. All sorts of other things that magnesium oxide is good for instead of sheet rock. But of course, building code and pricing and everything like that, we keep you using the crappiest stuff that's the cheapest because that's where we make the most money if we put it together and sell it to you without any consequences. So, yes, Emery, if everybody, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. When you work hard, you will appreciate it. You will have the gratitude for what you have. I believe this. We have a couple other people. One of them, I just got the letter on today. I like the letter so much, I've already said, let's run for this. Let's do this. Let's give this to them. Because she had all these facts. She tells me who they got there. I'll check them out. I'll be sure. I don't like liars. You send me something full of lies and I find out. I don't know your name. I don't know you exist. As far as I'm concerned, the moment you start lying and trying to steal using lies, you lost me. You're out of here. Go eat dirt. I don't care. Liars like cheaters who would steal a country and then justify it. It's like, oh, well, we won. That's all that matters. That kind of liar, do not apply. And if they're in your group, you better clean them out. Because if I spot them and I see them, that's a negative mark on your group. If you got a group full of liars and you're saying you're the truth teller out of the group, uh-uh. We already got a president like that, supposedly. It's not really, but it looks like one. And a vice president like that, it looks like one. 
Please, don't be fooled. I'm writing a fantasy book. Wibbly one. You know, I'm going to leave this at this point right now. I'm going to come back again. We'll see how it gets spread and shared because this seems to be an issue and I'm okay with that. Because if too many people find out about it, I can't even deal with the potential traffic because we've already got one, two, three, four, five, six people. That's um, if we take one week out of every, every two weeks for people to come in and give ourselves a week break, that means that six people, I'm 12 weeks into my year, three months out just giving away what I've already made decisions on. And half those people don't even know they got a good chance if they pull it together. But that's it, isn't it? It's the mystery of it. Who's going to get it? Do they deserve it? And we're all going to watch what they do with it. So whoever gets on this list, understand. We're going to try to get your attention and make your outpost spectacularly successful. Because if you can prove it works, then I got something to work with for other people to do the same thing. And the more people prove it works, then the more momentum, the idea of a world union of beings doing something without the government, doing something without big corporations, we, all of us eyes, us little people getting together, forming that we that is not divided, not the W-E, we, and them. Although I will say there is a them. Don't get me wrong. There are people out there who would just as soon see this put down and shuddered in a heartbeat rather than have you get anything. Because you might give hope to the hopeless. You might bring those on the streets back into action. You might inspire imagination. Curative powers of empowerment. Yes, when you empower somebody and you give them hope, that's a placebo effect, yeah. That kills off hopelessness. That kills off Suicide. Yeah, you can kill suicide with hope, with dreams and visions that might come true that you're willing to work for. Yeah. You'll find you don't want to kill yourself if there's still hope left and maybe be able to help out your family and friends and other people that are worse off, yes, worse off than you. As the saying goes, I used to complain I had no shoes until I saw a man with no feet. I have been gifted in many ways in my life. In spite of broken back, in spite of the pain, in spite of the sorrow, in spite of being ripped off, in spite of all the things I've had to suffer through. I am ever grateful. I am alive. I am healthy. And my suffering made me stronger. If it weren't for losing my son, I wouldn't love as deeply as I love. Then I damn sure wouldn't be helping all you out. That wasn't my nature. I was a businessman. I was a very good businessman. And that I made money. I was successful. That's not everything. Not if you want to be happy. You can be an angry, successful businessman. They're all over the place. Heck, you can be an angry, successful businesswoman. They're all over the place too. In fact, you can just be an angry person and not be successful. There's more of them than any other kind. They're out here hacking me up because I'm successful. They're out here, I mean, just as... Big as Dallas, judging everybody and putting them down and hacking them up and chop, chop, chop. Why? Because they're a worthless little life that they're doing nothing with and they're ashamed of. Well, they don't want to go look in the mirror and see that. They'd rather go look at us and throw knives and axes and attacks of every sort. And guess what? We didn't get here without having all that already. We got used to that. That's called the gauntlet of life. You think I'd be here if I was afraid of some worthless troll bothering me too much? I have fun with them. I get to express some of my frustration with the stupidity and ignorance of our planet by pointing out how some of these people are just literally brain dead. 
but they're angry and they're hateful and they're judgmental. And everything you do, no matter what it is, will never be good enough for them. Yet they will never do anything of substance to help anybody other than themselves. So, they don't need to fly either. This is about helping people that want to help other people. And the more they help them, the more I will give them. And the more they prosper, the more this organization will prosper, which is devoted to nothing but empowering and giving you a chance to create your pure salvage outpost, to create your village, to create your solutions so that you can share them with others, not just mine, yours. Okay? I don't have all the answers. I promise you, don't come here thinking I got all the answers. I don't. I got some of the answers. I got some of the solutions. It's all of us bright lights working together that are going to make this work. It's not one person stepping up to bat. Otherwise, I guarantee you, that one person will go down just as fast as a truck hitting it in the highway at 80 miles an hour and somebody going, whoop. Yeah, he was facing the wrong direction. Never saw it coming. Doom. Some of us are crazy enough to see it coming. Some of us even want to jump out of the way now and then. But I know the semi's on the highway and I'm dodging back and forth. I'm not censored yet. I'm not banned yet. This is a fantasy, guys. Remember? And the ones that are complaining, the trolls that are trying to get me taken off, well, I can only defend myself so well. But if you share, then you'll find it's very difficult to share my videos and get anybody to actually be able to see them. It's like they go out there and you think people can see them, but they go invisible. And there's just a lot of people don't give a shit. Just plain don't care about anybody or anything except where's their paycheck? Where are they partying at? They got the scripts. They got the drugs. They got the beer. They're having a good time. They're watching TV. They don't need any of this stuff. Don't even want to hear about it. Don't put it in their face. Just leave them alone. Let them go. But for the rest of you, you got friends that need this, please share it with them. Share it with the good people. Don't, don't send me a bunch of BLM, Antifa, or any other organization that believes that the destruction of the individual's right to speak, to use their imagination, to have the freedom to worship their God. Nah. We're not trying to build communities that destroy our society. Join me. I'll do everything I can to help you. And if you can, help us a little bit. That'd be great. I don't even know that we've ever even put up a donation page, but at some point, we may need a little, a little bit of cash. I don't think our government's going to help us. Yeah. I don't expect Facebook to send any bonus checks. In fact, they've never paid me a penny. And YouTube, as a matter of fact, has never monetized a single video I have ever done. So, for the rest of you that are cyber superstars, hey, share. I can't cause you any harm. See y'all later.